Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another DIY video. In this video, we're gonna try to recreate some gallery department flared sweatpants. Now this was requested, and if you guys have any other requests you guys want me to try to recreate, leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram at Julius Nathan, and you'll probably see a video about it. Now if you don't know how they look like, I'll put them on screen right now. Now these, as you can see, they're purple. And the thing is, I'm gonna be using these pants instead. So it's like a light heather gray instead of purple. Cause all the stuff I'm going to be using for this video is going to be from my closet. Uh, for example, I have like this black pair of joggers here, uh, this other gray one. Then it looks like the flare panel on the inseam has some light blue denim. So I have this as well. And the main issue with me using these sweats is I don't know if they're gonna be long enough uh, to like engulf my shoe, you know, like how it's supposed to be. Also, I've never actually added a flare panel to the inseam of pants before, so this will be a learning experience. But it does look pretty straightforward on these sweats. It looks a lot less complicated uh, than denim. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. I chose to use these sweats for a minimal because I'm not really a fan of how slim fitted they were on me and they're too light of a gray. So to kind of fix this, we're gonna open up the hem at the bottom to extend it a bit. Like all other hems, we're gonna use a seam ripper to rip open the seams holding it down to expose the elastic band, which causes the pants to scrunch up if you didn't know, and then rip open the seams holding the band down to remove it. To make the pant leg opening easier to work on, I use an iron to work out all the creases. Now we can really start this DIY. First off, we're going to be working with the inseam since we're going to be adding in an inseam panel that goes all along the entire inseam of the pants. As you can see, there's a panel already at the crotch area, which we're going to replace and use as a guideline when figuring out how wide the inseam panel should be without compromising the structure in the crotch area too much. Unlike denim pants, the inseam of these were pretty straightforward in that all you have to do was simply remove the stitchings to separate the two pant panels. The only issue is that it's tougher in my opinion to open up the seam on this type of fabric compared to to denim because it's easier to rip a hole through the sweats. So be careful even though it will take a while and rip open the inseam entirely. The diamond piece we removed had a width of 4 inches so we're going to base the inseam panel off this measurement. Basically the widest point will be 4 inches at the crotch. To get the length of how long the inseam panel will be, I measured the inseam of the pants which turned out to be 32 inches long. Now with the blue denim I plan to use for the top half of the panel, I measured and marked a rectangle on it measuring to 32 inches long by 4 inches wide and cut that out. The bottom halves of the inseam were black, so I ended up using these black joggers I had lying around for this. For the measurements, I ended up going with 20 inches long by 4 inches wide. One thing I should mention is that the total of the measurements that I took for each panel was actually a lot longer than the actual length measurement of the pants. This was to allow for seam allowance for when we have to sew the panels together. And also, it's just much better to have something too big rather than too small because you can always cut and edit if need be. Once all the panels were cut out, we can start sewing. With the right side, sides of both fabrics facing each other, I pinned them and then sewed them together with about half an inch of seam allowance. To make it look clean on the front side, turn the panel over to the back side and iron the seam down from there. Now we're left with a super long panel. Again, with each front facing each other, I pinned the panel to the inseam of the pants all along from one end to the other on both sides. This is where we're gonna develop the crotch seam on the middle of the inseam panel. It actually might be easier to take measurements and then remove the panel you just pinned down and then sew the crotch seam from there, but I did get a little bit lazy and I just pinned and then made like a guesstimation of where the seam would be. I was kinda off, but it kinda worked out in the end. Once everything was pinned, I sewed in the inseam panel to the sweats. I didn't have a definite seam allowance size, I just sewed in each fabric together and sewed about a quarter of an inch from the edge, something like that. I started from the bottom of each pant legs and ended before I hit the overlapping flap of the inseam panel. Then I sewed together that flap along the line I marked to be the crotch seam. When I tried on the pants, there were a couple of things that were off. One was that because the panel was just one sized width, the fit around my upper thigh area felt awkward because of the shape of the pants in that area around my legs. And two, because the opening of the pant legs were too wide, if I were to add in a flare, which is the next step, the width of the flare would be just too tiny. Basically, I had to remove the panel and make some adjustments. I ended up changing the shape of the panel into an hourglass. Starting from the crotch area, which I knew had to stay four inches, I drew lines that tapered inwards to two inches to the middle seam so that it'll still have a slim fit but then taper outwards to three inches at the bottom of each pant leg in order to decrease the size of the pant leg openings. The openings ended up measuring to eight inches which was my ideal size for when I want to add a flare panel to any project. 
Now we can add in the flare panel. Because there isn't an outseam on these sweats, we had to make one ourselves. To do this, I folded the pant legs on their side, making sure that the new panel that was added was in the middle, drew in a line about 17 or 18 inches long from the bottom of the pant legs, and cut the pants along it. I decided to make the panel 3 inches wide and cut it out on some gray joggers. With the flare and sweats right side facing each other, I sewed in the flare onto the sweats and then added in some darning stitches above the tip of it. Because the pant leg openings were raw, I sewed in a zigzag stitch around it to secure it. Instead of putting gallery department onto the sweatpants, I ended up creating a stencil of the name of my upcoming clothing brand to be used as a replacement because why not? For anyone wondering, I made it using a Cricut cutter and some poster board. I then taped the stencil in place and painted over it with black spray paint. For the rest of the painting process, there isn't really a direct route I took. I just painted in color by color and in different ways to create different looking markings and spillage. When I tried creating the green spray paint design on the back, I completely messed up and had a bunch of overspray happen, but thanks to Google and a lot of vigorous scrubbing of a combination of dishwashing soap and cold water, I managed to remove the part of the green paint that I didn't want, and we're done. Yo, this DIY kind of turned out to be one of those ones where everything kind of just like fell into place. I'll be honest, I was a little worried about a couple of things before starting this DIY. One of them is the length of the sweatpants. The gallery department ones, those are pretty freaking baggy, you know? And these, the default version, how they were originally, were not that baggy at all. But after extending it and everything, like it all just came together, like I said, and I really like how the length is for these. Now, when I was spraying the green part right here, I completely messed up. I overestimated the surface, the amount of surface area that the spray would actually take up from the distance I sprayed it at. Um, but fortunately, I was able to clean it up a little bit and now it's, it's cool, it's all good. Now, one thing is, uh, I don't know if I added two little spray splatters, spray, paint splatters on the backside right here. Maybe I should add a little bit more, but at the same time, I don't wanna do too much, you know? But if you guys like how it looked like, make sure to drop a like, I'd appreciate it. Hit that sub button too, I'd appreciate that even more. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram as well, at Julius Nathan, if you guys want to keep up to date with what I'm working on. I usually post it on my story. I'm trying to post more, I'm sorry, but I will get there eventually. And if you have any pants you want me to try to recreate, hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM, or even leave a comment down below with this video or any of my videos, but I'll probably see it more on my Instagram. So just DM me. The next video is going to be another ends repair DIY. Um, this is going to be a very interesting one. It's going to require a lot of sewing, a lot of thread, a lot of bleaching. It's going to be pretty exciting, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.